Natalie Dupree Cooks is made possible in part by Publix Supermarkets. Publix is pleased to support this and other quality public broadcasting programs. Hello, I'm Natalie Dupree. For today's menu, I'm serving clean out the refrigerator soup, smoked trout potato salad with lemon vinaigrette, rosemary and currant breadsticks, and buttermilk brown sugar pound cake. Next, right here. Hello, I'm doing a clean out the refrigerator minestrone soup. I'm going to get my bacon and onions onto cooking and then I'll tell you about the beans. What I have here are some dried beans that I uh, pre-soaked, covered them for an inch last night. Or you could actually put them in boiling water, in water, bring them up to the boil and let them sit. That's another way of doing it. Or you can use canned. This show is really based on what you should have in your house in your pantry to make it easy for you. So let's say you come home tired one night and you really don't want to go out and go shopping. And you say, but I don't know what to ha have in the house to eat. Well, go in and see if you haven't got some bacon. It's a good idea to always keep some bacon on hand. You can defrost it in the microwave if you've frozen. It doesn't fr freeze forever, but it does freeze for a while. And I always pop some in there. And I'm, in fact, I keep some in the refrigerator as well. Um, and just fry up some bacon with some onions because onions are another thing that you should always keep on hand and go back and stir it occasionally and then go ahead and when they're nice and soft and cooked together take a little bit longer than what's done for me add your drained beans now if you're trying to hurry a recipe up sometimes if you actually cover the onions with another ingredient they'll cook faster and so I'm not going to stir that up. I'm going to let that just sit like that and let those onions cook underneath the beans while I'm getting everything ready. Now, I'm going to add some stock. It can be whatever kind of stock that you keep on hand. There are some nice canned vegetable stocks and some nice cubes of stocks out. Or you can use chicken stock. You could even use a beef stock if you want to. Uh, stock and broth and bouillon are essentially all the same in cook's jargon. So whatever you want to call it, you should have. Here's a cube that you can just make up. What you need to do is to go to your local grocery store and buy every variety of, of cubes that they have there and every variety of canned stocks or broths that they have there. And do your own individual taste testing. Uh, see which ones you like and so that you'll get a mental idea of how much you have to flavor them when you use them with your favorite recipe. Now, what I have done here is, is made up this chicken broth from a cube, which is something that I do when I'm traveling. Sometimes my husband and I will meet midway at a state park, someplace like Alabama, or we'll meet in his cabin in Mississippi, and uh, we'll each drive and meet halfway. So when I'm driving, I don't want to lug cans of things, so then I use the cubes, but normally I keep the cans on hand. It's, it's all optional. Now I happen to have some carrots. Carrots last a long time in the refrigerator. They add an enormous amount of flavor and of course a lot of nutrition. So just go ahead and, and um, pull those out. Then add a little celery and some potatoes. How about some garlic? I'm about at the point where I need to give it a good stir anyway. And the little stuff will fall to the bottom. Here we go. And I'll cover it with my stock. and let it be simmering. Don't want to fill that pan too full. So I bring it to a boil, then we reduce the heat and cover it and simmer it maybe an hour, hour and a half, but it wouldn't have to be that long if you didn't want to. And, um, and add some other things. So let's, why don't I go ahead here before it's added and add some eggplant. Well, you might have some zucchini in your refrigerator. You might have some broccoli. So those you wouldn't want to cook an hour and a half. You would wait till the end to add those. It's all very optional and what it just depends on you. But this eggplant will fill it out. Nice little nightshade there. Here's another way of cutting it. Put it so that you're not cutting on the round. I did that and it was awkward. It wobbled on me. So go ahead here and here. 
cut ahead here and here and here. Okay. Pop it in here. And like magic, it's done over here. <laughs> so this has been cooking a good long while. Now you say, this isn't a quick meal. Remember, it's much, much faster than getting in the car, going to the grocery store, waiting in the checkout line, even if you just bought 10 things, writing your check, because uh, are you perfect, would you have already gotten your cash, getting back in the car and coming home. And you've used up, you've cleaned out your refrigerator at the same time. Now, then you go ahead and you add some tomato here, um, some mushrooms, they could be canned or fresh, just whatever you've got on hand. Then I have um, some salt and pepper, of course, just a little. It's going to need a fair amount, actually, and you might even add a pinch of sugar if you wanted to, uh, to bring up that tomato flavor, but taste it first. And I've got a little cayenne pepper. That never hurt anything, or it could be a hot sauce. Um, there's my pepper right there. I've already added that. Uh, and here's some uh, chopped basil, maybe, or, and or oregano, thyme, Rosemary, this is the rosemary, this is the dried rosemary. Not anywhere near as nice as this fresh. You can see the difference in the color right there. But, um, but it works, it works fine. And then you just simmer the whole thing for 30 minutes longer. And just let's get those all in there. Bring this up to the boil now, I had it on low. Um, just let all these flavors marry. Now did you see that big piece of tomato there? Even if a recipe doesn't tell you, break up that tomato. You can just use your hands. And then, when you're ready to serve, I'll just, oop, there's another one. Before it gets too hot, I'll just break those up. And when you're ready to serve, you just ladle it up into your beautiful bowl. And toss it with some Parmesan cheese. And maybe a little more parsley, like what I saved here. Maybe I'll have a little bit more left over from what you do. And there it is. It's delicious. This is that wonderful, wonderful Parmigiano Reggiano, which um, I keep in the refrigerator for a long time. And I also keep in the freezer uh, for a long time so that I can pull it out and use it when I need it because it adds such a wonderful boost of flavor to everything. And you know, green beans would work as well in here. Uh, anything that you had left over, a little spinach wouldn't hurt. So now, let's go from my TV kitchen here in New York to my home kitchen in Atlanta. Here I am in my own home, and I want to show you some do's and don'ts of freezing. First do, keep a very broad list on, your, on the front of your door that will tell you exactly what's in it roughly. And then one that's very precise so that regularly you go through, inventory your freezer, see what's there, and make a list for yourself of exactly what's on each shelf so that it doesn't get lost. Pull open your door. Here, a good do is that I have my, all of the, the ingredients that are the same, my vegetables, on my door. But alas, I have a little package of shallots that I chopped up one time in the distant past when the shallots were beginning to sprout and I have absolutely no idea how old they are. Nor do I know how old the cranberries are on the shelf just below them. I always freeze cranberries, however, when they're in the grocery stores in the fall because when I want them in the spring, I want them to be available. Um, on the top shelf, I have my baked goods and I want to show you that I've got them as tightly wrapped as I possibly can so that um, they won't get any freezer burn. But look at this guy, see? It could have gotten maybe just a little bit more. Now here's a real bad don't. Here are some different size cakes. You know what happened. We were testing recipes and we got in a hurry. And we threw them all in the freezer bag, didn't mark it, when in fact, and they're getting crushed now, so it's virtually useless. Take them and put them in a, pla in a container that's solid so things won't go on top of them. Wrap everything very carefully. Freeze things flat as much as you possibly can so that they won't become cattywampered in your refrigerator, I mean in your freezer, like this is. Well, you can see 
that's not really going to stack very well. It's going to make it very difficult. And those are just a few of the do's and don'ts. And most of all, be sure to get all the air out. Now, before I show you how to make this smoked trout potato salad, I want to talk to you a little bit about the things, the root vegetables that you should have on hand in your home. Because potatoes are really invaluable. If you can just keep some potatoes and some onions on hand all the time, and I want to show you how I've got them stored over here on the table. I have uh, potatoes and onions and garlic, all of them in a rack where the air circulates. I have both sweet potatoes, I have large small new potatoes, I have large baking potatoes and boiling potatoes all there. I have several different kinds of onions and some shallots in there and some garlic. Now, let me just come back now and tell you about what you should do. Whenever you cook some potatoes for anything, like whether you boil it or bake it, throw in a little bit more. You can never have too many good cooked potatoes in your house. It's like you can't have too much pasta and you can't have too much rice. Um, so what I have done here is I have cooked a couple of some extra potatoes. Now, if I, I would probably serve the minestrone by itself that we showed earlier. Uh, but if I was going to serve it with this, if I wanted something really hearty, then what I would do is, um, is omit the potatoes from that dish and put, in, put them into this, or vice versa, it doesn't matter. Uh, to cook these baby new potatoes, you just put them in boiling salted water and simmer them until they're done. Oh, it takes about six to eight minutes, and I just keep them in the refrigerator until I'm ready for them, whatever, however many I have left over or extra. Nothing should ever be wasted like that. Can just think, how can I use this in my pantry? Now, I have here some beautiful smoked tri trout, and this comes many times smoked tr trout, the smoked fish come in packages uh, of that last indefinitely a good long while so you can just keep them on in the refrigerator to pull out for when you're desperate uh, you can use them for hors d'oeuvres or in a salad like this um, they're wonderful just on crackers kind of better than kipper snacks uh, that's kipper snacks are one of my treats I always keep kip kipper snacks on hand too it's uh, what I have sometimes for Saturday lunch when my husband doesn't fix me um, banana and peanut butter, grilled banana and peanut butter sandwich. That's the only thing he can make. He's learned how to make that at the Elvis uh, Sun Records Campe Sun Records Cafe, where Elvis Presley used to go. And um, so Saturday lunch is his. Uh, I don't do Saturday lunch. I love cooking other, the rest of the time, but I feel too frantic on Saturdays. So he does that, and that's what he fix fixes either kippers and saltines or else grilled peanut butter and banana sandwiches. Now here uh, is some red onion. I have some tomatoes here. They look a little worse for the wear. I bet they weren't from Florida and I bet they kept them in the refrigerator um, before we got them, but it wasn't at my favorite grocery store. Uh, I'm up in New York, as you know. So now I've got some cucumber and that lasts in the refrigerator a good long while. Um, got this, I've seeded it, and I'll show you how to do that in a second, but let me get everything combined, and here's some potatoes that we did ahead, gracious, plenty of them. Um, and there's even more trout there that I don't need to add, and it combine it all. Now let me make the vinaigrette. Oh, I could add a little handful more here. Now let me make my vinaigrette. In a small bowl, whisk together lemon juice, some basil, and this is a basil chiffonade, we call it and some uh, vinegar and olive oil. And that little lemon juice vinaigrette just really nice with the uh, bumps up the vinegar for this. Now add salt and pepper to taste. And you know if it's too oily, you want to add more salt. You can always add sugar if you need it. Toss the vinaigrette over it. Toss the whole thing. Place it in the refrigerator and chill it for 30 minutes. Then when you're ready to serve, put it over leaf lettuce, spinach, or other greens. To keep your refrigerator a good long, your refrigerator, to keep your lettuce a long time in the refrigerator, dry it, wash it and dry it very well. I keep paper towel in it. Squeeze your paper plastic bag and make sure you have absolutely no air in it. And it should last you a week or 10 days even sometimes in the refrigerator. So 
I will be back in just a minute with a wonderful dessert. I love keeping something like a buttermilk brown sugar pound cake in my freezer because it freezes so well. But it's also nice if you decide you want to make a dessert and you don't want to go out and go grocery shopping for anything more. I normally keep cream cheese in my freezer. It just seems to me like it's a very accommodating kind of a thing. So I, it lasts about three months in the freezer, but usually I use it up before that. And I defrost it overnight in the refrigerator, or I have put it on low in the microwave. I won't say it's always perfect, but I have done that. So those are all things that can kind of stretch your pound cake. And what I have here is uh, some cream cheese and some butter and some granulated sugar and some brown sugar. And that's really just because I didn't have enough butter and I didn't have enough of one kind of sugar. So I combined the two sugars. And you can kind of fiddle with that sometimes with the recipe when you get used to baking. It can't do it the first time you've done a recipe unless you're desperate. And then if you're desperate, you can do it. So I beat them together until they were nice and light. Uh, oh, it takes about three to five minutes when you have a great mixer like that or if this. And um, you don't use the wire whip usually with pound cakes because that makes it too inflated and then it collapses more. It makes it more of a light cake where you want density. And then I'm going to add some eggs one at a time. And beating it for a minute after each addition. And then over here, while that's beating over there, I'm just going to let the beat just a little bit. Um, better not, I better turn it off because you don't want to overbeat pound cake, as I said. Now, in a bowl, I'm going to sift together some all purpose flour, some baking soda, baking powder, and salt. Oop. And actually, I normally just do that right onto my wax paper because, as you probably know, I am bone lazy and I don't like dirtying another pan. So I'll move, the, or another bowl. I'll move this over here. I forgot to grease and flour my pan, so let me do it now. Here's one way. This is the way we used to do it at the Cordon Bleu. We used to brush with melted or room temperature butter. Here, every bit of a pan. This is how you prepare a pan. Now, I always put a piece of wax paper in the bottom. I forgot to do that in this time, but that's just in case. Then you flour all the way around. But alternately, if you have something like this that you keep on hand and you're short of butter, then this works very well, except that I got it too close and too much. So I'm going to have to turn that upside down for a couple of seconds for it to, some of it to, to get out. It was a little overzealous there. So now I have some buttermilk here. And I always keep buttermilk on hand, too, because I live in the South. And that's sort of a real favorite of ours. But I also keep dried buttermilk on hand. Or you could, if you didn't have buttermilk, you could certainly use just dried milk and make it up to be regular milk and use that with a little vanilla. And now you have to begin and end with your dry ingredients and mix it in. So let's add a little of the flour here, mix it in, then a little milk, and a little more flour. 
the rest of our milk, and then we'll finish up with the flour. The, you actually have more control shooting it from a piece of wax paper. I know I've made a mess, but I haven't intended to. And here we go. And then right in here. There's the last bit. Now you should stop yours part way and scrape around the sides. This is a wonderful machine. I truly love it. But I do find that I have to scrape around the sides halfway usually just to be sure that everything is off of the sides. That's the worst thing that happens to you. All right. Now I'm going to pour that into my greased pans. And I always have to think about how to unlock this. Now, of course, you want every last bit of goodness off of here unless um, there's someone in your house that might want to eat it. It will drip uh, otherwise, so you'll waste it. So you might as well get every last bit of goodness out of it or else give it to someone else to eat. Now, put it into my loaf pans. I'll take both of them. And it bakes at 325 degrees for one, two, and one and a quarter hours or until a toothpick inserted in the center comes out clean. Now, the way to do this, to technically fill it so that you have two cakes the same size, let me see if I have a ladle out here. I don't guess I do. I've, I didn't bring one out with me. But ideally, when you're trying to fill two pans and you want them to be equal, what you can do is you can uh, you put a ladleful in one and then a ladleful in the other, and then you alternate that way. And that makes sure that you have divided your batter in half and you have enough for both. Now, there are wonderful things that you can do with pound cake in the freezer. You can serve it toasted, of course, for tea. You can have, serve it toasted for breakfast if you have a wonderful Saturday morning coming up where you can luxuriate just a little bit. Why not? Use some of the frozen fruits. When I use uh, frozen peaches, for instance, what I do is I use them half frozen. I I like them with just a little crunch to them because by the time they defrost completely, they're not wonderful. And the same thing is true with the frozen raspberries. And I like the kind that are kind of individuated, even the individuated strawberries. Now, when you want to clean off your, your um, spatula, hit it against your hand. Don't hit like that when you're baking because, first of all, you can't control where it goes, but also you're going to ultimately wreck your good things. So. Um, try not to knock them around. See, it, it's re really the temptation of the devil to do that. Now, you always cool on a wire rack for about 10 minutes before you remove it from the pan completely. And if you have a little skewer like this, my sister sent me something once that she got from a magazine that's metal. It's really cute. But you can also put your uh, skewer in, and if it comes out clean, then you're pretty sure that it's done and that it's wonderful. So let me just slice this up and show you how to do this. Wouldn't it be nice to have it with some tea right now? Sit down, put our feet up, knock back for a little while, and have our lovely toasted pound cake. Let's talk a second about the baking pantry. I've got just a little bit of time. Always try to keep one, at least one kind, oop, I can't get it all under there, uh, one kind of brown sugar on hand. These are fresh berries. Aren't they lovely? Uh, and they're nice to have on hand, but obviously you can't do that from your pantry very much. When you're in your, um, like thinking about stocking your pantry, have as many kinds of flour as you can. All-purpose flour, cake flour, bread flour would be ideal, and several kinds of sugars, the granulated sugars, the brown sugars, either light or dark. I don't think it matters which one you keep on hand if you can only keep one. Try to keep some extracts on hand like vanilla extract or lime extract or lemon extract. All of that helps. Now let me show you all of our wonderful goodies here. We have clean out the refrigerator minestrone soup, smoked trout potato salad, rosemary and currant breadsticks, and buttermilk brown sugar pound cake. Mmm! all delicious. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.
All the recipes in this program and in the entire series are available in Natalie Dupree Cook's Everyday Meals from a Well-Stocked Pantry, published by Clarkson Potter. This book contains a collection of over 150 recipes complete with do-ahead and storage tips. Order your copy by calling the number on your screen. The price is $20 plus shipping and handling. Please have your credit card ready when you call 1-800-235-3000 for Natalie Dupree Cook's Everyday Meals from a Well-Stocked Pantry. Natalie Dupree Cooks is made possible in part by Publix Supermarkets. Publix is pleased to support this and other quality public broadcasting programs.